Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our latest C3G video. Um, my name is Heiko Voigt from uh, Harbourlight Software in Halifax. Graham? Graham Akers from Brightech Systems in Vancouver. And Colin? I'm Colin Brackles with Castlebrack in Ontario, Canada. And uh, this week's topic, by the way, um, is HCL Digital Week and HCL Ambassador nominations. And we're happy to have with us Mr. Tim Clark. He's got a few slashes in his job title. He carries some important portfolios at HCL. Uh, Tim is the technical lead for the go-to-market team. Um, he's also the worldwide user group liaison. So all the wonderful user groups, uh, not ours, there's many others as well who do great things. Uh, Tim is responsible for that. Uh, and finally, he's also the worldwide program manager for the HCL Ambassador program. And uh, yeah, Graham and Heiko and myself are very grateful to have been HCL ambassadors and uh, fingers crossed we'll still make the cut next time around. Uh, you well, viewers we'll can see, help right? with that, by the way. We'll in December. <laughs> um, more on that. Um, with that, let's, let's throw it to Tim. Um, what have you got for us today, Tim? Oh, well, um, you've asked me to come and talk about a couple of things. Um, the first is uh, the digital week that we're doing, and I've got some slides I want to go over um, with that just to make sure I get the message right and everyone gets all the information they need. And then we're going to talk about um, the nominations that are currently live for the HCL ambassadors um, and uh, give you some timelines and, and what's going on around that. So this year we were supposed to be, well, my passport was supposed to be full this year. You know, I was, um, we were planning at, at this point last year to do a whole series of like factory tours around the world and then do a bunch of user groups. So I was supposed to be this year in places like um, uh Tokyo and uh, Bangalore and New Delhi and China. We were planning to be in Beijing in February, um, but that kind of went by the wayside for some reason. Can't think what. Um, and then we were supposed to do Milan again and North America twice for factory tours. So I was supposed to be all over the place doing factory tours this year, um, as well as going to all of the user groups and stuff and seeing all the HCL ambassadors and everything up, like around the world. Um, but it kind of fell by the wayside. So we've pushed a whole bunch of stuff together into one week um, so that we can do um, as much as we can for everyone. So we've got this fantastic week coming up. In fact, we've got two fantastic weeks coming up. One is for Americas and EMEA. Um, and the other one is for Asia Pacific Japan in December. Um, we are basically going to reimagine how we deliver our messages um, and we are going to do over like, 75 sessions i mean one of the important things is with all our product launches are coming on the tuesday so the november the 10th we've got some fantastic product launches so if you do nothing else come and listen to those um the agenda is really succinct right so we've tried to keep it quite short each day so that you're not completely consumed by this because we realize you're not actually sort of imprisoned in a conference for eight hours each day in a foreign city um, you're at home um, or in the office um, sat with your computer so we're trying to keep it as short as possible and get as much value in for you as possible we've also done what everyone's asked and we've got some industry analysts coming along to talk about what they see the future of this certain brand of software is um, uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see what they're going to say about how HCL have taken the software and are moving it forward. So I'm actually interested in seeing what they're going to say myself. Um, yeah, why would you attend this? Like, seeing as you can't go there, right? So it, it's you have to you have to sort of sign up and attend, and the onus is going to be on you. Um, but the point of this is that we're not just delivering one thing. So um, we're actually trying to deliver three very different things in the same in the same manner um, so you'll see what I mean in a minute um, we've got these three different events so we've got digital solutions imagine which is the day one and two and those are like the business events so those are where people are gonna um, get to understand what our business direction is and what the analysts say about us and our product launches on those first two pieces ninth and tenth 
And then on the 10th, we've also got the um, DX Inspire event starting, and that runs for three days. And that would have normally been a physical event somewhere, just like a, almost like a DX user group, um, but they're doing it digitally. So we've wrapped that into Digital Week um, so that everything's the same. And then we've got our world famous factory tour. Um, we may or may not be dressing up for it. I'm not entirely sure yet. Nobody's told me. Um, oh. uh, but, uh, you know, we've got three days of technical. So it starts off at business level and then it, it, it merges in the DX thing. They've got the whole range of business through to technical stuff for DX, which is fabulous. And then we've got um, a bunch of the, a couple of DX things going on in Factory Tour, but the rest of the digital solutions portfolio, it's the dig deep technical stuff. Um, in the factory tour so hopefully you know that shows you what's going on during the week um, yeah there's a little bit of overlap um, in terms of the events but hopefully you can see that there's value in the whole week you know depending on you know it doesn't really matter if you're technical or not you still need to know what the product direction is so um, there's there's a good set of stuff going on across the whole week um, you'll see when you go and look at the website there's um, a whole bunch of sort of lovely colorful product based uh, boxes that kind of make me like recoil a little bit every time I see them because they're just so bright uh, on a plain white background but they got great um, content in them and if you look at these things these fat these four things are um, gonna gonna be launching in fact the one thing that's missing there is connection seven um, so you've got HCL Domino 12 what we're gonna do how we're going to do that the world premiere of vault mx um and i think we showed the ambassadors that this week and the response was fantastic um and that's what we did with the the coney quantum um, purchase previous earlier in the year and then we've got same time premium coming out um actually coming out that week and we're going to be using it as part of the factory tour to actually deliver some of that uh, which is quite exciting um and then we've got um how we start using the digital solution software as part of your digital office um, and how we push that forward. But that's just a couple of the bits. Um, I'm going to recommend that you register for this um, for no other reason that you, <laughs> you can tell me how Vault performs because the registration form you see there is running out of Domino Vault. Um, and the uh, very pretty agenda you can see there on, on the right hand side is Domino Vault 2. So the create your own schedule. Um, the, the, the personalized agenda stuff, that's all running in Domino Vault. Uh, and I've had the pleasure, challenge, nightmare of um, actually creating that Vault app. Uh, and it's been interesting for somebody who's not a developer. You, well, you might say citizen developer. Um, it's been very interesting to go through that process and, and create that application and learn a bunch of JavaScript that I never thought I'd have to do um, and um, work out what CSS grids are and how you build those dynamically on the fly. Um, so yeah, come and take a look at that stuff because that's really quite interesting. And we're pushing the boundaries of Domino Vault in our delivery of this event. So um, you'll actually get to see the the, the Vault app, uh, Domino Vault app, live and personal because that's how you attend all of the sessions um, from inside that app. So it's going to be really interesting. And we're going to make everything available after the event. So all the videos of the events, all the recordings will go up on YouTube unlisted and you can get to them via the app so that you know how to find them. Um, and we'll make all the uh, materials available too um, through the app so you can download them and zip files from there. Is the, um, the agenda, the majority of the agenda all put together already or is it still in transition? Well, if you give me about an hour, <laughs> okay, I'll have finished good. importing all the abstracts. Uh, and by the time then... this video goes online, it'll be all done. Yeah, right. So the, by, by the time you publish this, it will be done. And, and we might even have had marketing push out the email saying, um, come build your agenda, right? So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's almost, almost there. I mean, literally mug of coffee time away, really. Awesome. Yeah, I've registered, but I haven't done my agenda yet. Well, the, the agenda's not live, so you can't just yet. Well, there you go. So that's that for Factory Tour. Any questions on that one? Before we, uh, not Factory Tour, Digital Week. Sorry, my, my mistake. Um, any that seems like that? a lot packed into uh, five days. Uh, I can tell that there's going to be a few people who are pretty busy. Was there, um, I, I guess I can, can probably guess it, some of the lo logistics as to why to put it all together, but that seems like a ton of stuff. Yeah, so... 
we figured that you know if we were to do this as events um it would be actually like two or three days worth of content um and we've noticed from other events that we've looked at and the successful events that we're seeing running in the industry is that actually if you can keep it down to about two to three maybe four hours a day you get a lot better um attendance and we're trying to keep the session short so you'll notice if you take a if you can see a quick squint on that agenda you'll see some of the longest sessions are like 45 minutes um everything else is half an hour bite-sized chunks uh, and the roadmap sessions on day one, day one of factory tour so that's the wednesday they're 15 minutes so we're giving the product managers just 15 minutes to explain the roadmap so we're Good. trying to keep things short and snappy to keep people's attention on purpose um if you want to go deeper um we're doing this fantastically challenging thing where we're gonna put same time meeting rooms up with the developers in them so we'll be like the the, meet the developers meet the developers like, yeah right? cool so Ooh. we're having a same time meeting room of up to 50 people um to come and meet the domino developers and come and meet the notes client developers and come and meet the same time guys and and come and meet the dx people and the developers are like super keen to talk to people so cool. you know it's going to be really cool that those coffee lounges are going to be open from the first break all the way through to the last break and they'll be open all day um, so it's almost like a meet the developers lab and loads of people have said that's a like I've had absolutely polarized opinions some people have said that's a great idea and other people have said that'll never work so we'll find out we'll push the technology and see what happens right that's part of what I do in the go to market team is push things as hard as we can until until we can't push them anymore awesome you'll learn something interesting for sure whatever happens you'll learn something about how people receive the experience and <laughs> yeah, some neat sure. things will happen for sure I can't wait to do some of the wrap up. I mean, I want to get the event done first, but I'm, I'm really keen to see what happens in the, in the wash up on this. But yeah, you were right. You were, you know, we've stuffed a lot into five days, but it's because we're condensing it all down. Right. So it, we're making sure it's only three to four hours a day rather than, you know, when you come to a factory tour, you come to an event, it starts at 8am and you finish at like, well, 10 o'clock when you finished chatting to your buddies in the bar. Right. You won't have that with digital week. It'll be spread out across five days, but the, the actual amount of time because we're covering time zones as well you know the amount of time that we can actually use is you know condensed and we need to keep it short and snappy and, and keep people interested and engaged awesome looking forward to it uh, so am i i'm looking forward to december because i get to chill <laughs> <laughs> and lots and lots of busy up to december um and we've got you know other other things happening in and around that as well um uh, and one of them is um, the uh, HDL ambassadors. Hopefully, I've switched successfully across to my browser. Looks good. Um, uh, you'll see here uh, uh, some of the uh, ambassadors class of 2020. Um, but down the bottom here, are any of you guys in this? Heiko, are you there somewhere? Yeah, somewhere in the back. Somewhere at the back. This was from Engage in March, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and then. This is, this is what I want to talk about, right? So this is the, the process that we're currently in. Um, so HCL ambassadors are nominated every year to be an ambassador. And it's based on the past 12 months good works, as it were. And the good works that we're looking for are um, people who go above and beyond their day job for the benefit of the community. And if I was to sum it up in one sentence, that would be it. So... It would all be about what do you give back? How do you um, make the digital solutions um, in community a better place um, for you and others to be in? Um, so what we do is we open up this nomination process and you can nominate yourself or you can nominate somebody else. And, you know, if you nominate somebody else, it has a little bit more kudos to it um, internally. Um, but we do recognize having, you know, having done this stuff myself in previous lives, I do recognize how hard it is to actually nominate yourself and, and kind of recognize the good stuff that you do. Because it's not, it's a lot easier for somebody else to look in at what you do and go, oh, that was great. Or that was great. Or I really valued that. And you're just getting on with stuff and doing stuff because you love it. And I know you guys do this C3UG um, videos because you love it, right? But I know the amount of effort that goes into doing these videos. 
the planning, the trying to get a speaker, the you know actual recording, and then the video editing afterwards, and then putting it up online and publicizing it. I get it, right? I absolutely understand. Um, and then you know we understand that you guys do blog posts and you do training, and and it's not just you; it's a whole community of people. So in October we open up nominations, uh, and then we close them down at the end of October. And then I have the lovely job of um, sitting as the head of the committee that goes through and spends lots of our November wading through all of the, um, what I call evidence, um, but you know, in, in the nomination form, you'll see it called highlights. So we ask you to give three highlights, a maximum of six highlights of what you've done in the last 12 months um, to make a difference to the community. Um, so we go through all of those. And I mean, everything, everything gets checked um, to make sure that it's not false um, and it's not something that was six years ago um, and to make sure that it actually meets the criteria of being an ambassador. Uh, and then in December, I get the fantastic job of being able to announce who are next year's ambassadors. Um, we do have um, a lifetime ambassador award um, that we have gifted out um, to some ambassadors. Um, they are they don't have to nominate themselves every year. They, they are just ambassadors um, and they're actually a lifetime ambassadors. But with that, you get a whole bunch of, I don't know, um, recognition, if you like, and reward from HCL. Um, so it's, uh, you get uh, digital badges to put on LinkedIn. You get logos to put on your profiles. You get the kudos from HCL of being an ambassador and you're listened to. I mean, I'm going to ask you guys a question, right? Do you feel listened to by HCL? Do you feel that we come and ask you questions and listen to your answers? Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I appreciate most about the program is, is being able to engage in conversations with folks from HCL um, where, like you say, Tim, our opinions are asked for kind of in advance of, let's say, some kind of an announcement that HCL wants to make, um, where we have the chance to just offer our feedback and, and critique. I, I uh, can think of one particular uh, conversation this year where I was uh, somewhat critical um, in my feedback, and uh, uh, and that's appreciated, right? I mean, you don't go over the line, but but where you where you have the opportunity to say, you know what, this doesn't line up properly for me, and here's why I think of it that way. Um, I know that I engage in one-on-one -on -one conversations after the fact um, for people to actually understand what, what our opinion is and, and why we feel that way. And it's, it's valued. I, I really appreciate that. In the tech itself, I would add that the, some of the conversations that we take part in is long before the product strategy is fully baked for not, not a whole product, but parts of a product, like, you know, things like DQL and the Optive pack and all kinds of other things that uh, ambassadors are definitely consulted on and, there's a broad range of opinions that are put forth by them. A lot of people have a lot of hands-on experience with different things and can bring interesting feedback that HCL might not have expected that HCL can take to do an even better job with its innovation. Now, I know you three guys are all tech. You know, you're all very clever technical people, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that the the HL ambassador program isn't just for techies. It's for anyone, right? You could be a salesperson. You could be a marketing person. You could be a business partner or a one man band consultant, or you could be part of a customer uh, of ours and you could be an ambassador, right? So long as you're doing stuff that's sharing um, and enhancing the community, then that's absolutely fantastic. So one of the examples that I give is um, there's a couple of guys in the ambassador program who are salespeople. Uh, and they're in there because what they've done is they've taken their successful sales process for selling our software and they've shared that with the community and given people best practices and tips on how to sell into customers. So because of that and the, and the fact that they share that stuff and help mentor people and do that kind of stuff for a sales process, that makes them ambassador worthy. Um, so it's not just techies. You don't have to write a book on um, you know, the latest and greatest programming stuff. Um, you don't have to write how to administer a server of 60,000 people. You just have to share, okay? Um, sharing needs to be part of your DNA, really, to be an ambassador. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to share the love when you become an ambassador by inviting you to ambassador-only programs. So, like, beta programs for Domino Vault earlier in the year, like December, January last year, we released 
um, the Domino Vault code to the ambassadors before anyone else. Um, uh, so, you know, you get access to stuff first. We like to big you up. We like to make a big song and dance about you at our events. Um, and that's no, um, that's no exception in the factory tour. We're running four round tables where we're having um, a guaranteed HCL ambassador and a guaranteed HCL employee as part of the panel. And then the rest of it's made up of eight up to eight other people um, so that we can have that round table discussion. But we value the HCL ambassadors so much that we're inviting them onto our stage to join in as, as qualified, knowledgeable people about what we're trying to talk about. And the other thing that you guys said is, you know, you get to talk and com comment back to us. Um, and, you know, all of the ambassadors um, sign up to this code of conduct um, that anyone can download. Um, it's freely available. So you know that the standard that the ambassadors are actually working to through this code of conduct. Um, so it's a very open, very honest program. I think one of the biggest benefits that anybody gets from it is joining in the community and joining in the discussion that happens in and around all of the ambassadors, because myself included, everyone learns every day in that community, learns something new, whether it's technical or business process or functional. How do I log a support ticket and get an answer quickly? Or how do I download something from FlexNet? Which, you know, myself included, find challenging, right? But there's always an ambassador that's done, been there, done it, got the t-shirt and can give you a helping hand on getting that stuff done quickly. So it's a fantastic community to be part of. Um, if you've done anything to enhance the community, then nominate yourself. If you know someone that's done that stuff, um, nominate them. Um, so there's the, the nomination form. Uh, and we're you know, fairly clear and honest about what we want from you as part of that nomination. Um, and you have to have the right information before you can go forward. So you have to have the name and address of the person that you're nominating. You have to have the permission of that person if you're not um, that person yourself. And you have to have at least three pieces of evidence or highlights uh, of stuff they've done in the last 12 months. And then you get to choose whether you're nominating yourself or someone else. Um, and you run through the form and it's, it's dead simple. Um, but this is all based on HCL Domino Vault again, right? So we're, we're drinking our own champagne and using our own tools um, to run our own programs, which is uh, good news for everyone, really. Um, so any questions about the ambassadors? I know you guys are you know, like ambassadors and I, I hope you love the program. Um, the one thing I haven't mentioned is that we do also give out swag um, uh, merchandise to people. And the reason I don't mention it very often is because we've been having a few teasing troubles getting that process off the ground, but we're so close now that I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, and everyone that's been an ambassador uh, in the past will get swag um, very, very shortly. Okay, well, that's uh, some fantastic feedback. Thank you very much, Tim. We'll uh, include uh, the links to the, the pages that you were mentioning in the video description so people can find out where to uh, uh, do the stuff here for signing up for Digital Week and for nominating ambassadors. Thank you again. So, Colin, over to you. Well, guys, you know what to do. We, we ask you every time, like, comment, subscribe. It can't be just our moms. Take a minute. It won't kill you. We appreciate it. And uh, register for Digital Week right away. Nominate your favorite ambassador. And uh, we'll see you there. See you on the next video too, guys. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, man.